loved farms. He had a toy farm with sheep and pigs and cows. But he'd never visited a real farm, not until his seventh birthday. It was his birthday treat outing with his mum, his brother Seb and his little sister, Isabel. Hello, boys. How can I help you? Can you tell us where the pigs are, please? Go past the chickens. On the right-hand side, that's where the pigs are. Alex couldn't wait to see his favourite animals. But when he arrived at the first pig pen, he stopped and stared. This pig wasn't like his farm pigs. It was so big. He looked at the pig. And the pig looked back at him. It wasn't smooth like his pig's. He could see that its skin was covered in hair. You're a very hairy pig. They're all hairy. We don't actually call it hair. We actually call it bristles. You look a bit disappointed, Alex. Alex was disappointed. The pig just wasn't what he'd expected to see. I know they're not like your toy pigs, but they're fascinating animals. This one's BT, and um, would you like to help me look after her today? If you help me out, you can get to know her a little bit better, can't you? Yeah! Looking after BT sounded like a great idea. First, they helped Andy fetch a bale of straw for her. You've got your gloves on, haven't you? So what we do is we hold it by the strings, otherwise it all comes apart, yeah? Right, now we need to He explained that BT would burrow into the straw at night when it was cold to keep herself warm, and she would eat it too. Okay, you just, you just stay there. That's brilliant, fellas. That's right. Now what we do is we just spread this about a little bit, making sure we've got the strings. And what she'll do is she'll make herself a nice new bed out of it. When Beatty's new bedding was settled, Andy the cleaned out her water out. trough so she had fresh water. The next thing Beatty needed was some food. Is it? Will you be very careful? While Alex measured out her crushed wheat, Seb got her some potatoes. Andy said that BT ate two and a half kilograms of crushed wheat and half a bucket of potatoes every day. Seb laughed. He said he couldn't eat that many potatoes in a month. Now, as you can see, BT's waiting for breakfast. So what we do, rather than going in there, we just put it down here. You can see she gobbles it up straight it away. Like she's drinking water. While Beatty you know, was eating her wheat, there. Andy hid her potatoes in her bedding. He said what that finding them would bed. give her something to do. Alex watched Beatty as she ate. He could see how she used her tongue to scoop the wheat pellets into her mouth. She was a very noisy eater. As she walked around the pen finding her food, Alex noticed her feet. She looked as if she was walking on tiptoe and she stepped so carefully. Soon as only soon she'll be eating her dessert, the potatoes. <laughs> BT soon found her potatoes. Her big floppy ears were covering her eyes, so she couldn't see the potatoes very well. Alex watched her using her snout to dig into the straw. I know what she's doing, he thought. She's finding them by smelling them. My, my pig now then. Do you, want... Do you like her now? Yeah. Alex did like her. She's not at all like my pigs, he thought. She can walk and eat and drink. And she can look at you. She's much better than a toy pig. She's alive.
It was spring. At the farm, Alex and Seb were helping Andy weigh the new lambs. If I just take this off, and what I need to do is carefully put him into the sack. Now he'll probably make a noise because he doesn't want to go into the sack. Uh, no, it's Molly's behind you. That's right. Now, he wants to know what I'm doing with this little baby, so she's been very protective. If you were put into a sack, your mum would want to know why you were being put in there, wouldn't she? So be careful you put it into the sack. And we've got to make certain that it goes hooked securely onto this balance here. Now it's, now the lamb was just two weeks old, and it weighed there. nearly so four so kilograms. Read that for me. So if we hook it out, carefully take him away, show him to his mummy. There you go. There you go. And that's our little lamb Wade. Is there anybody here who would like to actually hold this little lamb? Yes, please. Here you are then. Right, so do you want to move just a little bit further forward on that on that bale? Hang on. Now it was struggling a little time. Come a bit closer. Come a bit closer. Come a bit closer. Right, there you go. So tuck your arm hand underneath there. That's it. Hold its back. Hold its back legs. That's a good lad. And you need to hold it firmly. Okay. So does it weigh a lot? Oh, it's yeah, it's very heavy. What does it feel like? Uh, is it warm? Uh, is it the little lamb furry? felt warm and soft and woolly in Alex's arms. Oh, is isn't it woolly? Oh. Oops, so just hold it nice and just hold it nice Can and firm. Can I give it to you now? You want to give it back to me, do you? Okay. There you go, you've done very, very well. Is that the first time you've held her? Oh. Held a lamb. Well, oh, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. That's a good lamb. Okay, boys. If you remember those those little lambs that we've just uh, we just weighed. Now they were two weeks old. Now little Acorn here, she is actually about eight or nine weeks old. So she's about seven weeks older. But you can see the difference in size already, and that's because she's been look, well looked after. She's had a lot of milk from her mum. She's had a lot of hay, which she's been nibbling recently. We can't put her into a sack and then weigh her on those bones because obviously she's far, far too big. We put her through a special weighing crate, which is what we're going to do right now. So if Vinny can just open up the door for me. Acorn was eight weeks okay. old and she weighed nearly 25 kilograms. Alex was amazed. He weighed 20 kilograms. Acorn weighed more than he did, and he was seven years old. Andy explained that lambs grow a lot faster than humans do. When all the older lambs were weighed, Andy let them back into the pen with their mums. As Alex looked at the lambs, he began to notice something. They all looked slightly different. He couldn't see two that were exactly the same. He could see one with a black patchy face and one whose face was mostly white except for brownie patches round its nose and its eyes. And he could see one with a speckledy face and speckledy legs. Suddenly, Seb noticed something. Look at those two, one's all black and one's all white. They're actually sisters. They came from the, the same you. Andy explained that the mother of the two lambs was a black-faced sheep and their father was a white-faced sheep and that was why the two sisters were different colours. One was the same colour as their mother and one was the same colour as their father. The lambs are just like you two. If you look at, at each other, I mean, you don't look absolutely the same. So, so how come you've got green eyes and your brother's got blue eyes then? Well, um, my mum's got blue eyes and, my, and our dad's got green eyes. So I take my dad's eyes and he's taken our mum's eyes. That's it, that's it in a nutshell, well done. That's a brown one, okay, what about that one? As Alex the fed the lambs, he thought, in some ways you're very different to me. But like Andy says, in some ways we're just the same. Andy was in the greenhouse one rainy morning when Alex, right, so Seb, Mum and Isabel arrived at the farm. Are you two boys up for this? Yeah. Fantastic. Right, 
Now what we need to do today, if you look here we've got some geraniums and they're getting a bit too big for their pots. So then they're going to need some extra room to grow. Well the first thing we need to do is to obviously take them out of the pots. Now I would actually just give these a little tiny bit of a squeeze and the reason we're doing that is to, to make certain that we can actually get them out in one piece. Give them a bit of a tap and they should all fall out quite nice. Now what we need to do is we need to try and find have a look at the plants. Andy so told them to check that the plants roots. had lots of roots. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these small geraniums and put them into these bigger pots so they've got much more space to grow. Okay. Take a little bit. Then he showed them how much compost to put in the bottom of the pots. Purple. Just tap it down like that. Okay. Now what we do is we get hold of a, a nice healthy geranium. We put it into the pot centrally like that and then we get a little bit of compost Put it around the outside. Using your fingers, give it a press down. Finish it off, give it a nice little tap just to make sure it's level. What do they need at the very, very end, do you think? Water. Fantastic. So do you know what to do then, guys? While Andy took Mum and Isabel to see the plants in the next greenhouse, Alex and Seb set to work. The compost first. They tried hard to follow Andy's instructions. I just need a little bubble. Is that enough? Is that enough? Yes, that's enough already. Yeah. Now, now put the plant in carefully. Planting wasn't very easy at first. Okay. Oh, there's some roots above the ground. We have to make sure that the roots are below the compost, otherwise they won't grow properly. Yeah. Remember, if it's leaning, find where it's leaning and support it. That's what I'm doing. I'm supporting the stalk. Yeah, I think that's enough. But after the first few plants, they began to get quite good at it. Well done boys, you did an absolutely fantastic job there. Choose one each, make certain that you keep it water, keep, put it in a place where it's going to get enough light and hopefully in a few weeks time, a few months time, you'll get a, a plant that looks just as nice as one of the ones over there. And because they did look after the plants as Andy said, that's exactly what happened.